Hi everyone, I'm Josh and welcome to Josh Wright Piano TV. Recently, I started taking a look at the Chopin Concerto Number no. 1 in E minor, First Movement. This has been one of my favorite pieces um, for many years. I still find the recent Chopin Evocations CD uh, recording by Daniel Trifonov uh, and Mikhail Pletnev um, to be my favorite recording. I love many other recordings. I love the Martha Argerich recording. I love um, Zimmerman's playing, of course. Uh, I also loved, I grew up listening to Murray Pariah's recording of this piece, which I really like. But one of the questions that I get all of the time is how do you start practicing a piece? I have a little piece of advice directly from Murray Pariah that we asked him in a question and answer at University of Michigan. He was visiting for a concert and he said, I don't really want to do a, a master class, but I'll do a question and answer. And my goodness, he is brilliant. And someone said, how do you start learning a piece? And he said, I kind of mess around with it for a couple of weeks before I get into serious study. Now, Murray Pryor's messing around is probably more efficient practice than most of us um, do on a daily basis. But I wanted to show you a couple of like, my processes uh, as I start learning a piece. And I read through this once for about five minutes the other night. I've mostly been focusing on the first 30 pages. I've only worked on this for a few hours um, so far. This is brand new for me, but I have not worked on this part, uh, starting from here. I want to take you through that and then um, a little bit of this faster stuff too. So, let's see. And you notice I'm not like that great of a sight reader for <laughs> the level that I play at. And so I want to show you kind of how I, um, go about learning these things, things that I think about. There's a lot of videos of professional pra uh, pianists practicing on YouTube, and quite a few of you have said, oh, we loved your practicing videos because you actually talk to us during uh, your practice and tell us what you're thinking when you're practicing those pieces. So um, I wanna just kinda take you through my thought process as I kinda mess around with this for you know 10 or 20 minutes here. And then we'll call it good. Um, but I just, this is something that a lot of you have requested. So uh, this is something I'm working on anyway. So I thought I'd turn on the camera and we could have at it here. The first thing that I like to do is kind of sketch out a goal that I want to look at. And for the purposes of this video, since I know we're only gonna be working for about 20 minutes, really I should probably only do two lines, but I think that would get a little bit boring. So I'm gonna do a more glossed over version of what I would practice. This is a more generalized practice session, um, but still give you some ideas of little things that I obsess over, uh, things that I'm looking at the first time that I'm playing this, okay? The first piece of advice would be to listen a lot because then you have an idea of, uh, listen to recordings a lot because then you have an idea of what you're after from day one. Like if you listen, like I've listened to the Daniel Trifonov recording many, many times. And I mean, I even like work out to it a bit. Um, it's, it's really fun. I like it a lot. Um, but I know the sound world that I'm after for these various passages. So let's just take that first part one more time. I'm just gonna sit on this for a little bit, kind of feel the depth of that to get really soft but consistent sound. I'm gonna pull back on those keys ever so slightly. Pleading and then giving up. So I'm assigning emotions to it already.
just getting this distance into my hand so that it's just second nature. A lot of people discourage muscle memory. I think that's the dumbest advice. It's, it's good advice if the student is brain dead and they have no idea where they're at and they're just playing by rote and like they don't know anything. But to, to ingrain muscle memory into your hand so you know your distances is smart because then you don't rely and you're not having to like focus, oh my gosh, that's gotta be accurate. You might notice that I'm stroking a lot and I'm using flatter fingers. That just gives me a little bit more control on the keys. I did not like that. thing that kind of is a rise and a fall but I'm not gonna get too soft on that fall so that I can continue the line there three four three two one two three I like that By the way, this is bar 385, at least in the Paderewski edition that I'm playing from. Um, and this is the, the big development section. So there's a big orchestral 2D right before this. So. So this is actually a pretty easy pattern. One thing that I'm gonna focus on is feeling pulse, 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 pulse. Now that sounds terrible, but I don't want it just to be kind of this, because these are written in, basically in figures of, of course they're triplets, but the notation is written in groups of two. One, two, 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 one. And then it can be awkward at the end if you're feeling that pulse. So I still want to voice the tops and feel this falling line as one unit, but I still want to feel the perfect alignment with the left hand, which is why I kind of felt that pulse the first time. There, 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 there. Okay, now. So if that's still not working after like three or four tries, eh, that kind of worked. Might pull, push through a little. Let's say it's not working. What I would do is I just work backwards and I'm gonna do this anyway, just for safety. down at my hands. That's nice. Maybe a little more. Okay, now I know this is gonna be a little tricky spot, so let me just play this. I don't like to try to sit and struggle right off the bat. I'll just take it hands alone. Feels good, and then ah, 
not terrible. Uh, five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, one. Uh, I don't know if I like that. Yeah, I do. I was playing the wrong notes. Listening for the clarity there. Ugh, why do I keep going to A sharp? It's F sharp. slow this down to try to get it unified. I don't know why my brain wants to go to that A sharp there. Probably all laughing that I keep going to that A sharp. Okay. Ah, that's fun. I'm just having fun with this. This is just like this is very meditative. A lot of people would be just frustrated out of their minds by right now. I'm, I'm as calm as can be because it's just, I'm just thinking of these in four groups. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a group. Okay, just those four groups of eight notes. So one, two, three, three, four. Chopin puts a little hairpin there. A lot of times I like to interpret those hairpins as rubato markings. A lot of people don't believe that. Go read Seymour Bernstein's book, Interpreting Chopin's Symbols, I think it's called. He talks a lot about how those sometimes are indicators of time just as much as they are volume. So... That's why... It's feeling good. Let's try putting this in context. Also another really important reason why you should listen a lot. It'll perk up your ears when you make mistakes like I just did. I'm trying to decide if I like four or three there. special there. It's a Lydian mode. I 
teacher in Michigan would always say, he'd always say, what is that? And the answer was always either Neapolitan or Lydian mode. You knew that he just loved those two. So. <laughs> It's way too much time, but I'm just getting comfortable with those inner lines. Can't figure out if I want to go bring that thumb up. I think I do, because I'm trilling. They have a 3-4 trill here, which I, I'm really bad at, so. of that yet but I'm gonna move on I'll, I'll figure that out later so sometimes you don't get everything perfect and I mean that's acceptable what I just did so again um, you have to ask yourself, what level do I want to get it on practice session one? I'm already thinking a lot about the voicing, thinking about my sound levels. Making that more special. Okay, so. go about working this this is going to be a much faster section i know probably five more minutes that we'll spend here together so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to kind of relax and get these in my fingers so that ending part felt bad okay if i just kind of lift there that feels nice sometimes I'll do is I'll make a little exercise out of stuff like this. I'm just turning that same figure around. So this is the figure. And then I'll just play backwards. So that I... So I get that in my hand. From both angles. Maybe even just the bottom. And then... Oh, that feels good now. Yeah. I feel it was really good. Ah, one, two. Fingering change is different because you're usually doing like one, three, two, one, three, one, two, like that. Three, two, one, two, five is the better fingering there. So I need that as a, a little mental marker. So.
I'll just sit and obsess about that for a little bit. call it good for there today because I wanted to just get to a little bit of the more technical stuff that's also all obviously going really fast but I'm just gonna keep it there for a little while it's feeling good I want to let that gel get that into my mind get that into like the synapses of my brain give it a little rest now and I would keep going okay so you can see even in I don't know how long this camera's been running, 20, 25 minutes or so, I have, I have no idea. Um, even in just a short amount of time, we're able to accomplish quite a bit. So if any of you have any questions, my email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. I'll leave a few links in the description below. One of them is for a free webinar containing 10 of my favorite tips um, to help take your playing to the next level. Uh, a couple of uh, links for my paid courses if you want to go even deeper than this channel um, teaches. Uh, those cover a lot of some of the most famous repertoire and exercises in the um, piano repertoire. And then the VIP Masterclass series is all based on members' requests each week. Um, so answering your questions uh, in dedicated videos for that, that's a, that's a really fun course. And then um, the last link is uh, for all the gear that I use. So if you're wanting to record yourself at a little bit higher of a level, that's just a, a gear list that you can look through. Have a great week, everyone. Good luck in your practice sessions.